Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson Zapku, and in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to interpret a one-way MANOVA using SPSS output. As you can see here, I have the SPSS output opened that was generated after we conducted the one-way MANOVA. At the very top, we see the descriptive statistics, but what we're really interested in um, is the multivariate test table. The main results for the one-way MANOVA are found within this multivariate test table. So we're going to scroll down and find that table. Here, here it is, the multivariate test table. Now, here you can see that there are different analyses listed. There's phylase trace, wilkes limb beta, and a few more. These are the different multivariate statistics that can be used to test statistical significance of differences between groups on the linear combination of the two dependent variables, or multiple dependent variables if you have more than two. The choice of statistic used is really dependent upon a variety of factors. The most commonly recommended multivariate statistic to use is wilkes lomb beta, and this is what we are going to use. However, if we would have had gross violations of assumptions, especially homogeneity of covariance and variance, which we determined by examining the results of boxes M, or extremely unequal group sizes, then we might want to consider a more robust multivariate statistic, such as violation trace. Violation trace is more robust against whenever we have violations of assumptions. However, in determining which multivariate statistic you should use, you uh, based on the results of your data and what, you, what your data looked like, you really need to consult statistical text for a complete discussion on this. However, here, as I noted, um, since our data was fairly clean, we are going to use wilkes lomb beta. Now, as I said, um, the results for the one-way MANOVA are found in the multivariate test table. The results that we are going to look at is in the type of program row, and we're going to specifically look at this wilkes lomb beta row right here. Uh, I will just briefly mention there's this intercept row up here. I'm not going to discuss it as it's rarely used and it's rarely important, so we can just ignore that for right now. We're just interested in this type of program row. So the first thing that we're interested in is, it, are our results statistically significant? And we determine this by examining the p-value, which is found in the sig column or significance column. If this value is less than 0 0.05, so we go and we look at the wilkes lomb beta sig or row within the sig column, we note that the value is 0 0.000. That is less than 0.05 which is our threshold for rejecting the null hypothesis. So here we can say that the test is statistically significant. Now, when we go to report, and we'll revisit this later, but when we go to report the probability value, we're not going to say the probability value is 0 0.000. It's never 0 0.000. In fact, if we click on this table and we go to the data editor and click, we'll notice that there's actually numbers. So there are numbers behind this 0 0.000. So we never have a probability value of 0 0.000. We say we have a probability value of less than 0 0.001. So since we have a probability value of less than 0 0.001, our test is statistically significant, as I said, and we can reject our first null hypothesis, which stated that traditional and online students do not statistically significantly differ in terms of their linear combination of their learning community and connectedness scores as measured by the classroom community scale. What we can say is that there was a statistically significant difference. Now we're going to take a look at how we use all of these numbers and all this information to support that conclusion in a research report. So I'm going to go ahead and open a Word document to help us talk about this. As you can see here, I have the multivariate test table copied and pasted into Word so that we can discuss the results. You will also note that I've used ABCs or out the alphabet to label the output so that we can discuss the breakdown of the results. The first uh, 
statistic that we're going to report is actually the Wilkes lambda value and that's denoted by a here and so we're going to write Wilkes lambda and we're going to say it's equal to 0.685 and that's our MANOVA statistic. Next we have the F which stands for the F distribution or F test and the F um, value is denoted by the B here, it's the obtained value of the F statistic or the obtained value, um, and that's labeled B, and so we're going to say that that equals 16.797. Now what you'll notice he, uh, back here is right after the F, we have two numbers in parentheses denoted by C and D, and these are actually degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom one and degrees of freedom two. And they're taken again from this wilkes beta row from the hypothesis degree to freedom and the error degrees of freedom. Next, we have the probability value. And we've already discussed this. This is labeled by the E. And this is the probability of obtaining the observed F value if the null hypothesis is correct. And we've already determined that our probability level is less than 0 0.001. Next we have partial eta squared. So here in this column we have partial eta squared which is labeled as F. Um, we write partial eta squared and we say it's equal to 0.315. Remember partial eta squared is a measure of effect size and according to Cohen's convention, this is a rather large effect, which means that there was a large practical significance between our two groups. Next, we have observed power. And the observed power um, right here is labeled as H. And our observed power is 1. That really means that there was a 100% chance that the results could have come out significant. Now that we understand um, all these different numbers in this table and how to report it, let's talk about how to actually write up the results and use these numbers and these statistics to, to support our conclusion. Here you can see I've written a results section in narrative form. It follows APA format. And it says the results of the MANOVA yielded that there was a statistically significant difference between the two groups, online and traditional, on the combined dependent variables. And this conclusion, conclusion or statement is supported by those statistics that we just went over. Except I have an extra 3-3 three, three here. I'm not quite sure why I have those, so we're going to go ahead and delete that out. It says based on these results, so we can say that the results were statistically significant, based on these results uh, there was evidence or was sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and um, conclude that, that the results were significant. So you could say it like this, so you could say results were significant and you could state this, or you can say based on these results, evidence was sufficient to reject the null hypothesis and include there was a statistically significant difference. So you can state it like that or you could state it like that. There's no really one right way to state it. You do need to interpret the effect size, so not only report it but interpret it and say the effect size was large. You also need then also to interpret the observed power, so report what it is and what it means. So since our results were significant, we are going to follow up with one-way ANOVAs, which we'll talk about in the next tutorial.